What's up everybody? Welcome to the skincare video that I know a lot of you guys have been asking about. Just a heads up, they're doing some lawn work outside of my building right now, so if you hear it, I apologize. And I also wanna let you know that we're gonna be going through things pretty quickly today because I don't have a lot of time. And I will be making a follow-up video to this one um, to go over anything that we miss in today's video as well as um, sharing about a skincare product that I'm, I just ordered today and I'm pretty stoked to try and I think it would be really helpful for uh, skincare after Kratom addiction. So first and foremost, if you clicked on this video, you probably are someone who has experienced um, premature aging and skin issues from Kratom. I want to let you know that you're not alone. A lot of us experience this. And I think that that's part of the reason why so many of you guys have asked me over this past year that we've had this channel to make this video. Um, before we get into different things, different products that I've found that have worked, I want to let you know that this is not an overnight process and that the damage from Kratom on our skin is pretty much completely re reversible. We are going to have natural aging. It's just a part of life. Uh, natural aging to our skin um, in little lines and wrinkles and changes in our skin texture and stuff like that. Um, but know that the damage that's done by Kratom is reversible. Um, a lot of us, when we are using Kratom, find that our skin becomes extremely dry and that we are noticing a lot of um, wrinkling. Um, the change in our skin texture happens to a lot of us. So um, this is very common with Kratom use. Kratom is extremely tannic and drying to our bodies. And thus, in turn, our skin is greatly affected by that. Um, as well, Kratom, there is something, and we don't know because this is an unresearched, you know, herbal supplement, unregulated as well. We don't know exactly what's going on, but um, there's some sort of connection between um, especially high amounts of Kratom and um, malnutrition. So we don't know exactly what's going on, but um, there is a prevalence of uh, there being a lot of these issues from malnutrition when especially a lot of Kratom is being taken. So there's different reasons why our skin is affected by this and it could be the de dehydration, it could be the malnutrition, um, a lot of us has, have sleeping issues. So that can play into our skin not looking its greatest as well. So there are different factors that are involved. Um, this is not, like I said, an overnight process to heal your skin. I'm at three and a half years Kratom free and I really started to notice a big improvement in my skin about probably at the two year mark of quitting. And it took a while for my skin to get better. Um, what is happening when we are, when we've damaged our skin with Kratom is the, like the skin barrier, they call it, is damaged. And we, uh, because of the dehydration, especially, there is, um, like I was saying before, changes in texture. You're gonna get a lot more wrinkling. Um, the, the color of your skin as well is often affected by Kratom. So healing these aspects of our skin is gonna take time. Before we start reviewing these products as well, I wanna let you know too that what is foundational to our skin's health is being able to get adequate nutrition and getting good rest. And those things are really like the biggest part of healing our skin. 
Um, everybody chooses to eat in different ways. And for me, what has worked the best is eating a food that is based on unprocessed, um, in particular animal foods, meaning meats, seafood, eggs, that kind of thing. Um, my diet is based on that. And then I eat um, vegetables and I just now, because I ate no grains for three years actually, and I just now started to incorporate like a tiny little bit, like once a month I'll have like some gluten-free pizza that's made with rice flour, but that's like a huge treat. Um, that's not like a big part of my diet. I don't eat um, any unprocessed sugar. Sometimes I'll have a huge treat like once a month as well where I'll have like a little bit of ice cream or something when I go out for a special occasion. Um, but in my everyday diet, I don't eat any um, unprocessed sugar um, and I don't eat any processed foods. So one of the factors as well too is that I cut out caffeine out of my diet and I'd really recommend if you're someone that wants to get your skin back in order as quickly as possible, eliminating caffeine. I know it's not fun, but that's something that helps as well. So, okay, let's get into different products that I've used. Um, first and foremost, because we'll cover as well, like staying hydrated is so important for our skin. And I'm sure that when you're on Kratom like me, you're drinking a ton of water, but it's not hydrating you. And that's very common because Kratom is so drying and dehydrating on our bodies and our skin. Um, I started incorporating drinking aloe vera juice uh, about a couple months ago actually, so this isn't a long-term thing, but I've noticed a lot of benefits. And um, I drink two times a day about four to six ounces of aloe vera juice, and this is just a whole leaf organic aloe vera juice. Um, and then, and we'll cover two supplements as well. I have actually eliminated a lot of supplements. Um, the only things that I still take are vitamin C, which is very good for the skin. I take a liposomal vitamin C every day, and then I take magnesium and vitamin D at night. Um, so those are the supplements that I take, and vitamin C in particular is really great for the skin. Um, so moving on, aloe is like my best friend. I use aloe not only on my skin, but on my hair as well. And this is whole leaf aloe. You can buy it at the grocery store. And um, what I do, which you don't have to go through all of this, but if you want to get more bang for your buck, is I cut off the spiny things, I skin it, and then the inside filet, which is what they call it, I put into a blender, and then I strain that through cheesecloth. So I'm left with this aloe vera gel. And I make this a couple times a week. I keep it in the fridge so that it lasts longer. And I use this every day on my hair and on my skin. And um, if you don't wanna go through all of that, and you like don't want to deal with like chopping things up and like blending it you can actually just take the aloe and um cut a little bit of the skin off and have just like the, a chunk of it and rub it on your face oops i knocked over my thingy um and so you can do that as well and that's a lot easier um you're gonna see a common theme through a lot of my products that i use that aloe is a big component in a lot of these different products. So um, that's really big. Um, let's move on to honey. Honey is amazing for your skin as well as your hair. Raw honey in particular is what you want to go for. And with Kratom, healing our skin from Kratom addiction, we want to minimize how much water we're using on our skin because you wouldn't think that this would be so, but water is actually very drying on our skin, especially because I'm in Chicago. I have city water. It's especially drying on my skin. And depending on where you are, if you have well water, it might not be as bad. Um, but I would even recommend so to minimize how much water you use on your skin. And so how do, how do we clean our skin then? That's where honey comes in. Um, how I clean my skin is I take a little spoonful of honey or a little, you know, I grab it out with my fingers 
and I mix, um, I don't, you can mix a tiny bit of water just so it's not so thick, um, but I actually use this witch hazel aloe facial toner and this is really great stuff that is not drying. It's actually um, pretty moisturizing. So what I do is I mix a tiny little bit of this with it and I have my, um, my honey and then I wash my face with that. And then instead of using water, I take a washcloth and I put some of this on there and that's what I use to wash off the honey. And honey is amazing in many ways. It's a humectant, which means that it draws moisture to itself. Um, so that's one of the great things about honey. And um, we'll move on in a moment after we get through the next step in the process uh, to how I use honey again. Um, but like I was saying, we tone then, I tone with this witch hazel and I don't use any water. Um, then what I do is, uh, this is a serum that's actually really reasonably priced. It's uh, Pacifica Vitamin C and Glycolic Acid Serum. And I have tried a bunch of different stuff in my skincare journey. I've tried a bunch of different like bougie, expensive products. And I actually found this through a recommendation of somebody that came into my work and I was helping her. She was a customer, gorgeous lady, old, like uh, older meaning she was in her probably late 50s, early 60s, gorgeous skin. And I asked her, I was like, your skin is beautiful. What do you use? And she had a box of this in her hand and she's like, I have tried all the expensive stuff and this stuff is a game changer. And so I bought it. I think it's like $16 a bottle and there's a decent amount in there, um, an ounce, which, you know, a lot of, a lot of times expensive skincare will be even less amount for even more money. So this stuff is great because it has vitamin C, but it also has glycolic acid and um, different acids are great for resurfacing the skin. Glycolic acid, there's BHA and AHA, which I've used over the years, but I, I've settled on this one. Um, so after I wash my face with the honey and I tone it with the witch hazel, I use this vitamin C serum. Um, then I go in with more moisturizing and when I was in the process of healing my skin, now I'm to a point where my skin is pretty sol solid, but when I was healing my skin, I would use a lot more heavy moisturizers and um, I would do an all over heavier moisture moisturizer at that point. And um, CeraVe has been really good for me. I try to use completely all natural stuff as much as possible, but when it gets into certain aspects of skincare and, you know, different things, I prefer to use a product that is not, you know, what you would complete, consider completely all natural. Um, CeraVe, it, CeraVe is a uh, hypo, hypoallergenic kind of drugstore brand. And it's affordable and it's really good at repairing the skin barrier is like their whole deal. And so I used an all over CeraVe moisturizer when I was in the healing process of getting my skin back in order. And I don't really need to use that anymore. Um, so what I use now and my nighttime routine is I use this, this eye cream and I mix a little bit of the honey with it. And that's what I use as my under eye cream after I go in with my serums. Um, during the day, I actually don't have it on the table here, but I use a SPF 30 of a CeraVe daytime moisturizer. I, didn't, I forgot to put it on the table here, but that's something that you're gonna wanna incorporate as well as some sort of an SPF into your daytime routine because we don't wanna add any more damage to our skin with sun and that kind of thing. So after I treat my under eyes with the cream and the honey, um, I then go in with something that I absolutely love. And this is, this is one that I make myself, but I actually wanted to pull up on my phone here. Um, an awesome company that makes amazing products and was a 
influential part of me getting my skin in order. And I at this the owner of this company is so awesome and they make the most amazing products. And this stuff is a game changer. This is what you would consider, some people call it a balm, some people call it a salve, some people call it a fat wax. A fat wax is like the old school name for it. But it's basically a, um, you use different fats, like this has tallow, it has um, lard, um, it has beeswax, which is the wax part of it. There's avocado oil, olive oil, calendula oil. This is just something that I make myself. Um, but this gal who does this company and the name of this company, I'm just using my old phone for you to, for you to see. It's called Perm, they're called Perma Earth and their website is permaearth.com, perma-earth.com. And she does a lot of amazing things over there and just a great little company. So I'd highly recommend checking them out. And they especially, because I don't know if she has a, a fat wax in particular, but um, she has a really good tallow uh, cream, a whipped tallow. I think it's just like tallow and um, like essential oils or something. And it's absolutely amazing. The rose one that she has, it has uh, rose hip seed oil in it. Amazing, you guys. So I use this fat wax under my eyes only now, but when I was in my healing process, I use, because a little bit of this stuff goes a long way because there's so many heavy fats in it. I just realized I'm being cut off on the top of this frame. Oh, well, you're gonna have to live. Like I said, I'm in a rush right now. I apologize if I'm going fast. Um, but a fat wax or a tallow cream, something like that is going to be a game changer in your skin healing process. Perma Earth makes a bunch of amazing whipped tallows and I would really recommend those. Now, like I said, I just put them underneath my eye, but when I was healing, my skin was healing, I'd use just a tiny bit because it can get kind of greasy and I would use it over my entire face. Um, and then one of my favorite products, I've been using this for years, you guys, and I stopped getting it actually a little bit before my Kratom addiction and I thought of it maybe a year and a half ago. I've been using it for about a year and a half again, and it's absolutely amazing. This stuff is called Cell Food. It's an oxygen gel in particular. They do like a internal supplement thing, but this one in particular, um, the oxygen gel is absolutely amazing. And because now that my skin has healed, I don't have to use such heavy moisturizers on my skin um, at night. I use this as my nighttime um, skincare in my skincare routine, and it's absolutely amazing. You can read up on it, just like the different benefits of it, but it's aloe based as well. And then it has this like special cell food stuff in it that is incredible. Um, so that's what I finish my nighttime routine with. I don't use this during the day because it pills up. And I can't use it, you know, during the day with my sunscreen. So this is what I use at night. Um, a lot of us lose our eyelashes and our eyebrows when we're in Kratom addiction. And castor oil is incredible. This one in particular, the Sky Organics, you can just get it on Amazon, is awesome. And I use this every night. I use it on my eyelashes and my eyebrows. And it's made my eyelashes so long. It's made my eyebrows so full. Um, so this is the last step in the process that I use. Most of these things you can get on Amazon. I got this aloe vera juice at Whole Foods. Um, and everything else, yeah, I got on Amazon. And then your fat wax or your tallow cream you can get on permaearth.com. So like I said, this is going to be a shorter video. It's probably just going to be like an introduction video to skincare after Kratom addiction. Uh, we'll be making another video to follow up. Like I said, I'm going to be trying this new skincare product that I'm super stoked on that's affordable, that seems really cool. So we will follow up with that. But this is for those of you who have been asking for this video and it's our intro to skincare after Kratom Addiction. And I appreciate you watching. Any questions, leave them below. 
and I will see you in the next video. Bye.